Hunter's Road. I feel like we're going back to Virginia to get peanuts. Or deliver, oh, we, de oh, we delivered almonds to the planters.
when do they think you're gonna be done? <laughs> oh, did you just use a bad word when I'm videotaping? Cool. All right, so we're in the right place. Oh, I see a lot of people. It's good thing I didn't go in there. Yeah, there, so we had a four-point turn to get back out. Come this way. And that corner is really tight. We can't can hear you over here with all this noise. Uh, have availability after empty to be 1126. At 0941. That makes sense. of a feather flock together. That MTI should be over there, and then I would have had room, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody wasn't OCD enough here. Ooh, what's in all of these? Ooh, you can do a straight back here. Wow. So, can you tell us again? We couldn't hear you earlier. What were you saying about you? Good thing you didn't pull in there. And good thing I didn't pull in there where it looked like we were supposed to go. Well, that's where they have loading docks there and the shipping office is there, but I stayed out on the lane. If I had turned in and walked over to the shipping office, then I had to come here. I would have had to do like a crazy four-point turn to get out of there and then making a left to come this way was really tight because of the shape of the curve. Mm. So Unless you could have gone around the back of the building? No? No. No? no. Okay. You turn around right there. The, there. There's no lane behind the building. But you would have been close to the royal throne. Yes. <laughs> yes uh, hmm. Now, what is your frustration with the ELD? Oh, it's just... push a button and then it takes a long time for it to actually react and do something so then you've already pushed another button thinking you forgot or you didn't hit it right or something and then it does something else that you didn't uh. me <laughs> me 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 They used to build boats in uh, catamarans specifically. Yeah, right? in a boat yard down in St. Croix. So uh, Gold Coast yachts. We uh, we used a lot of fiberglass and epoxy resin, and it was very itchy stuff to work with. And there was a lot of dust and a lot of sanding and a lot of chemicals. And Hook up and they'll bring the paperwork out to you. Oh, I gotta go check this out. Yeah, I can't, I can't even up. close the doors. It's too close to the other trailer. Hey, here comes somebody. Mm. It's 
So Kevin had a nice long chat with the guy that came over here to bring him the paperwork. And as soon as he's done prepping and everything, we're gonna interview Kevin about this process. But first, let's go take a look. Yeah. So those are the containers that the fiberglass comes in. Yep. Interesting. I so look forward to hearing your explanation of how this whole thing works. He did not give you a seal just I could, now. I could put one of our seals on it. Let me look at the paperwork. Maybe it specifies. If, it, if there's a seal number on the bill of lading, then I know he forgot to give it to me. Because you guys got so busy talking about what they do here. I'm so yes. excited to learn about it. Okay, explain. So, if you don't have a seal, you should put one on. And the company provides you with seals. So, now Kevin's going to use this seal number, which is from Crete. Hey, did you want to tell us something then? All those boxes are full of fiberglass, like, like the kind of fiberglass you'd put on a boat or a car or whatever. And, uh, so it all goes into a vat with water and make a big soup. And then it's similar to the paper making process. It goes up over a, you know, there's a head frame that so it pours it from the vat onto some wire mesh. So all the moisture is pulled out of it. And then it goes into a machine where it's coated with like an epoxy resin, because that's how you take fiberglass and make it hard, right? And then it goes into a dryer. So normally you put epoxy resin on fiberglass and then you have to let it dry then you have to let it cure it gases off all kinds of noxious fumes and chemicals come to the surface and have to be sanded off and all that so this thing going through the oven dries it really fast and he said that that building over there has the newer system that's a lot faster with a bigger oven than the one in this building and then they take it and, and make it a, like a big mat and roll it up into a big roll and then it goes to another place another factory and they make roofing shingles out of it so oh, it's the, wow. the mat is the basis for your roofing shingle and then you coat it with you know sand or aggregate and, the, and some tar and all that and, but the, the base of your shingles 
It's fiberglass. It's I never right knew that. Here. Wow. I never knew that. And what did he say about the weather? Exposure to weather. Well, if here? you if you have bare fiberglass and and it's exposed to UV radiation, it begins to rot. Like it just starts to turn to powder and dust and crumbles and all that. So these are all sitting out here exposed to the weather. So they have to watch how long it's out here. And uh, even the plastic covering some of the boxes. UV radiation can rot that and stuff, and it starts to affect the fiberglass too. All right. So well, if you put fiberglass on your car or your boat, don't just leave it bare and, and take off. You've got to you've got to sand it and cover it at least with primer because then it starts to deteriorate. All right. Well, now let's take these empty boxes to Tennessee. I guess they fill them up there with the we raw material. Up. That's that's the boxes for that fiberglass. Very yeah. cool. Let's go. Guys coming back there. for another one. Six. That's such a cool process. Why do they have so many dumpsters? Uh -huh. He's very busy. Back and forth, back and forth. Now that's local, huh? Just here <laughs> on the property. I think. <laughs> I don't know, he keeps driving them back and forth right here. Alright, now what were you saying about the weight? Zero, one, five, two. Oh, stop. Sting, ding, stop. Stop. Asking why I've been here so long. What? We haven't been here long. Now, <laughs> tomorrow, this load is due at 9 o'clock in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a live unload. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're they're dying for these boxes? Yes, Like, if yes. they're not there right at 9 o'clock, then the whole place is going to come to a yes, grinding halt? Yes, because they got all this raw material fiberglass they need to put in boxes. At 9.01. <laughs> Do they normally oh, ask you oh, why you're here oh. for so long? My mess. No. Well, if you're here for an hour, it says you've been here for an hour. Should you be doing a detention form? No, what it is, the pre-plan for my next load. That's why they're asking. That's why they're asking how long you've been here. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it says Fort Smith, Arkansas, 1127. What? Owens Corning, Irving, Texas. How would I... Uh -oh. We're going to go all the way to Tennessee and drop this off yeah. and then drive 300 miles back here empty? Uh, maybe you need to call or text, huh? You Seems think a that's little bizarre, Is that the only freight moving no, out of Tennessee? I'm sure it's a mistake, Kevin. I'm going to call her. That's... Yeah, call right now. I mean, I'm getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. Deadhead Miles. Yeah. But, I mean, mm -hmm. is that really a good use mm -hmm. of your equipment? Mm -hmm. But first, tell us the weight. What were you saying about the oh, weight? 43,000 pounds. What? I need to scale this. Of like, empty quick. boxes? How yeah, can the boxes be that heavy? be heavy plastic. Wow. And lots of Maybe them. Maybe they so fill them with Arkansas rocks. The Do you think there's rocks in there? Scale. I know we passed oh, a lot of waste. New stations. message. New message. Sorry about that last load. <laughs> makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, we're gonna hit a waste station before we hit a scale. Yeah. That's mm. pretty crappy. Mm. Hey, get down. Get down on it. Yep. There's a waste station. Get down on it. Yeah, they had a lot of them. I noticed. Plus, you're right by the border. That's why. Yeah, coming out of Texas, they want to weigh you. Where am I going to scale this load? I have to, no. What am I going to do? What are we going to do about that? that? Let's pass the scale too. Oh, oh the next. The next oh, I know scale. Houston. Why don't we go to Houston? Scale <laughs> is at the love's forty-three miles from here, but the way station is only fifteen miles from here. Mm, well, hopefully they're all at home having turkey leftovers. This trailer's due for a T1. Yeah, it Ooh. looks like crap. I wonder how long it's been. Well, let me just uh, make a couple of quick notes about this load here. 
You are the prettiest load I've ever so seen. So if I was to drop that load, tomorrow's the 26th, I'd have to come back here on the 27th, not on the 26th, because I could get all the way back here tomorrow night, 370 miles. I think it's a mistake. I think they think you're here. I, be, I think they forgot about no, the fact that no, you're going back deadhead, to Tennessee. The deadhead miles, 375. That's how far I am from Tennessee, where I'm going. Oh. And then pick up a load here and just take it over into Texas. Not not very far, either. five hours into Texas, hmm. near Dallas. Fascinating. So, six and a half hours, empty. Maybe you're going to become a dedicated... Should I reply in Owen writing? Corning guy? Please attach your lock. Listen, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in writing. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? Are you saying? Are you sure? <laughs> like, how do you say that? Pre-plan zero nine two. Sure. Is that what you're writing? Are you sure you want me to deadhead? I mean, it was a nice ride. <clears throat> Maybe you should just say thanks. <laughs> Back here. Ooh, would our reset end up here? We could go to the fort. Oh, no, because we have to go to I Dallas. I can't pick up until the 27th, which is going to be Sunday. Pick it up here, go to Dallas, five hours, and then we might be almost out of time by then. We might be doing a reset uh, at uh, Wilmer. Send that message. Look at the time on the clock. We're going to get there tomorrow. And then come all the way back here. Right? Six, seven, fourteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and we have twenty-three hours left. So we'll reset in Dallas if this is the way it's gonna go. Uh, and we'll start Sunday afternoon. Huh. So let's see how they reply to that final question. You got enough to drink? Yay. Do anything because we're about to take off here. And we're not stopping for 43 minutes. I hope you're aware of that. Oh my gosh, that's oh my a gosh. lot of pressure. Can you make it? 43 minutes. What if it's 44? All right. I think. That's a long enough video. Hope you enjoyed your outing here to Fort Smith, Owens Corning for this pickup and watching this very interesting uh, other truck with the dumpsters. I actually did see he went out the front gate, so he's not just here, but he did shuffle a few of them around while he was here. Okay, well, thanks everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the ELD or give it a thumbs up and put your comments and questions below <laughs> and remember subscribe to our channel if you enjoy traveling with us enjoy our shenanigans and antics and want to keep learning about trucking and the roads of America with that have a great day with love from Kevin bye -bye. and Tanya bye